his Roy, I'm going to be honest with you, was playing Fuego today. He was playing nice earlier in friendlies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's nice about... I love uh, the classic, like, you'll get a dancing blade into down tilt near the edge and then just a forward smash on, like, Falco. And they just can't recover. Just barely mistimes the F smash. Clanks with Shine, that is what we call an unfortunate turn of events. Man, if you throw out an F smash there, that could have closed out the stock right away. The last hit of Roy's Dancing Blade is this huge commitment, especially because of the down version, just because those stabs come out, like, they just take forever to finish. Down tilt to F smash, the Roy bread and butter. What I've noticed earlier is um, Roy's uh, counter when you're edge guarding with the Firefox or the Firebird. Oh, for Roy's own. Oh my god, what a sad life. Um, as I was saying, the uh, the counter edge guard versus the the Firefox and the Firebird. Um, I know Marth's like almost always puts you in invisible ceiling glitch, but it seems like um, Roy's is kind of inconsistent because it has a hit, it sends up in a way where um, Marth's kind of sends away, like just straight up, like out. But Roy's yeah, if you sends don't have like your jump to get countered by that. You're dead. Yeah. See, like that. Where Ro Marth's would uh, put you in invisible ceiling glitch most of the time. So. Which way right now? I'm, I don't want to watch your Roy Fox plus the five. Great dancing blade. St. Marth, bro. You gotta wait till they're close to you. Play with fire. Down tilt, neutral B, little slow. Thomas with really nice slide off, or Amrak rather, with some nice slide off the eye on the uh, neutral B. And that's Roy, that's what happens. And that is a kill. Roy F smash, pretty good move. When they, when it hits at least. It's got some, uh, except when that happens, when you get Roy zoned. With the wet pool noodle coming out. Oh, and this is bad. This is a nice edge guard scenario, kind of. Now, I think Thomas should know that uh, Amrak is a fiend for ledge angles. He always goes for the ledge. It doesn't matter where you are in relation to it. He's going to go for it. That's a jab up smash. Roy living though. He's a thick boy. Oh, yeah. Shoot, Evan, you want to get a commentary? <laughs> yeah. We got Evan hopping on. Melee analyst Evan in the house. Here we go. Uh, is this best of five? Yes. Yep. Okay. So yeah, this is a logical counter pick. Uh, Roy has a lot of zero to deaths on this stage. Let's see if uh, like Thomas can execute Whoa. them. No, he should go for like an up air there. Yeah. Up throw. Uh, if they don't di, the only follow up you can really get is um, a falling up air. And the problem um, with a lot of follow-ups on this is Roy's abysmal sword. Yeah, but where the, about the, half of it does not function as the, a weapon. The thing is, though, that actually those weak hits are really good for follow-ups on yeah. fast fallers. Yeah. Um. So like, fast fallers are the only characters where Roy actually has any semblance of a combo game. So, uh, if Roy's gonna make it happen, it's gonna be on this stage. Yeah, for because sure. Because of the follow-ups. However, Fox still has the advantage in like every other uh, aspect. Yeah. Like neutral game, punish game. <laughs> 
clean stock, three stocks apiece now. Actually, one of the one of the hardest things for uh, for Roy in this matchup is um, if Fox plays like more non-committal. So how, how, how's Roy supposed to get in? Tell me that. How's Roy supposed to get in? Um, he just dash think, dances. Yeah, he's just got to dash dance. I know a lot of times you can poke with the first hit of Dancing Blade because it's hard. it's not yeah, easy yeah. to punish. If you throw out the third hit, you're kind of hooped. That, like the that right hit. there. Um, Amrak is choosing to uh, not di. Yeah, because then, um... Oh, that was a bold, uh... Yeah. <laughs> flare Blade. Oh, no DI on that forward smash. That's unfortunate. No. See, the nice thing about Fox as opposed to Falco is even if you get hit with uh, at the ledge with that F smash at low percent, you'll live, whereas Falco, if you get a down tilt F smash near the ledge, it's almost guaranteed stock just because it sends you so far. Yeah. The, fire, the Firebird can't survive, and then it's just a side B. Hedgehog. I but, would uh, like to see. I would like to see Thomas using more counter though, because um, Amrak's not really sweet spotting the ledge much. No, and he's uh, overshooting it a bit. That's a big risk for Fox if he gets clipped by that counter. That's yeah. That's a stock. What I've noticed where Marth's counter oftentimes will oh, oh that was <laughs> a dismal di. <laughs> yeah. Marth's counter will um, will uh, invisible ceiling a lot of yep. Um, uh, and Roy spaces. has, Roy has Roy's, the same property. Yeah, it does. It, it happens less often, I find, though, where because like, Roy sends up and away, whereas Marth sound, sends generally more out. Mm, it actually doesn't have to do with that. Does it uh, not? In, invisible ceiling um, depends on a few things, uh, namely the um, the hit lag. Um, rather, there, there's hit lag that doesn't cause damage. Right, this is something that happens with uh, with shield and with counter attacks. Yeah. And it also depends on which side you're on the stage. Um, invisible ceiling glitch tends to happen more on the left side of the stage because it's left of the origin. It's a negative X value. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then actually, if they don't touch the ground after the counter, you could do a Roy down tilt and it'll spike them. Ha! I didn't know that. That's so great. that's some uh, Roy technology. Well, and any character can do it, but Roy has like a, <laughs> a, a much sense easier of time. Yeah. And that's an easy up smash. Or you can F smash them and it sends them uh, like at a semi spike yeah. angle. Yeah. It's looking. Uh, I mean, Thomas is really he's keeping it really respectable. It's just the odd edge guarding choice, right? Like he's not going for those counters. He's not yeah. going for those down tilt F smashes. He's going for a lot of flare blades, which I find are really easy for the fox to yeah, maneuver around. Yeah, flare blade like it hard very covers commit. one option. Yeah, it's a very yeah. committal option where. Fox is sitting there in the Firefox. He's like, okay, I'm just going to go over you. <laughs> right? Shocked that he survived that, actually. I figured it was going to be like, easy. He's actually fight. playing pretty well in the neutral. He's just he's not finishing his punishes, and he's not getting all his edge guards, which is basically like, that's how you beat Fox. Yeah. Especially if you're a low-tier character. Yeah. And I mean, Amrak's looking pretty clean. Um... Wow, that's unfortunate. I remember playing a few um, like net play sets against Amrak with my like random characters. Yeah. And he kept taking me to FD, and I would keep getting characters I could chain grab him, and I would just <laughs> keep winning. But. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Thomas, I feel like he's just making bad decisions now. Like he ran off stage there. I feel like that would have been easy. Oh, time, yeah. that was interesting. He had a little bit of pullback on the F smash. There we that's go, what finally. we want to see. Now that looks like it. Okay, so th this sets up for another hit, right? Yeah. You can just rinse and repeat that. And I'm okay with the flare blade yeah. at that height yep. where yep. he's like Absolutely. parallel to the stage. He but could anytime a, he's yeah. above you or like far below, you know, it's not a very good option. Because it's uh. Yeah, sure. Going for the counter is like um relatively low risk, insanely high reward, right? Yeah. Because it forces them to pick like a really good angle like sweet spot it yeah exactly and if they if they do that then the counter whips and it's like okay you're on stage uh roy's Man. counter unlike oh these follow-ups yeah that looks like it's a it's clean 3-0 from amrak 